What's up everybody, this is Force from Double Decker Reptiles. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about large constrictors. Um, you know, a lot of the pros and cons of the different species, boas, burmies, African rocks, reticulates. Um, so without any further ado, we'll go ahead and get right into this. Alright, first thing we're going to talk about today are boa constrictors. Boas are that perfect first level large constrictor. Um, what we have here is a very young Guyana Colombian cross. He's a beautiful guy. He's well tempered. He's currently in the blue. Um, so about boas, I mean they get a very reasonable size. You know, normally six to eight feet. Males staying on the smaller end. Females getting a bit larger and you do run across those monsters who get you know, nine, ten foot. Um, so don't be surprised if they get a little bit larger. Um, you know, these guys are incredibly friendly. Um, bows are one of those. They're just pretty chill from the start. Um, you know, just be prepared. They do need some room to breathe. Um, the average tank size I would normally recommend for these guys as an adult is a four to six foot enclosure um, with plenty of room for them. A good size soaking dish. Um, you know, as they get older, their colors do dull and they do develop a lot more freckling. Um, depending on what species you get, um, they do come in a mass variety of different colors um, from the albinism, sun glow, hypomelanistic. Um, you know, there's not a really a lot of downside, and it's that perfect segue from something like a ball python if you're trying to get into something a bit larger um i always do recommend you wait and just work with these guys a little bit more before you get into something a bit larger such as the reticulated burmese um and you know we'll talk a little bit more about that here in the next second or so but bows are just one of those they come out they are live birthers they are amazing animals very well tempered. I mean, as you can see, he's deep in the blue and he's just getting loved on all kinds. So, we'll be right back with the next segment. Alright, so, next on from the list we have the, Al I have my little albino Burmese. Um, Burmese pythons are the next step in the large constrictor group. Um, they do get a fair bit larger than boa constrictors, uh, males averaging 10 to 12 to 13 foot, and females anywhere from 12 to 18 to 20, and you have those some rarities that get even larger. Um, they do get pretty heavy bodied. Um, they're pretty sluggish. I mean, they're they're essentially a, a giant ball python on steroids. I mean, they are just baby dolls. Granted, when they come out of the egg, they will pretty much strike at anything that breathes or moves. Um, so they are great eaters right after that first shed. You introduce their meal and they hammer it like no other. Um, so, and after a few handlings and a few little nips here or there, they do calm down. I mean, this girl is about three and a half weeks old. So she is still, you know, incredibly young. Um, so Burmese are one of those really awesome species. I mean, they're very friendly and they're used primarily in a lot of educational for large constrictors for children. Um, generally just for their temperament. Really laid back. Um, a lot of the, you know, a few downsides. These guys do get fairly large and require a fair bit of space. So the average rule of thumb is if your animal is 10 foot, it needs a 5 foot pen. You need to essentially double. Okay, Alright guys, please keep in mind that these guys do require a fair bit of space. And this goes for pretty much any large constrictor. If you have a 12 foot animal, you need a 6 foot pen. If you have a monstrous animal, say 20 foot, you're going to need a 10 foot enclosure. Um, this just ensures that the animal has plenty of room to move. I mean, generally speaking, Burmese pythons are pretty laid back. They only stay on one or two spots in their pen. Um, you know, it's like any other snake, if you're dealing with colubrids or... Smaller constrictors, sand boas, ball pythons, you give them a, a nice temperature gradient. Um, now be prepared. These guys eat, and they eat a lot. Um, on average, once they get a bit larger, my male, he's about 10 foot. He eats about, 
he eats one four pound rabbit every two weeks um so they do get a little expensive to feed um but once these guys grow up they're just absolutely phenomenal animals um so with that we'll move on to the next segment and we'll get this video wrapped up for you guys all right now we're going to talk a little bit about reticulated um as hatchlings they come out anywhere between 18 and 20 some odd inches um they are highly aggressive uh as hatchlings i mean and it's not even aggression it's more so defensive you know they're not your natural fight or flight they're going to sit there and strike first because in nature they do become you know something else's meal um they are highly aggressive feeders so if you do feed them in a day give them about 24 to 48 hours to kind of settle down before you try to handle them again and they do get anywhere between 12 and 20 plus foot and ranging anywhere between 1 and 300 pounds. I mean, they get fairly large. Um, one of the biggest downsides of these guys is their appetite. They will eat you out of house and home in no time flat. Um, I feed mine, you know, pretty routinely. And, you know, after that four or five day mark, they get a little bit hungry. Um, now, don't be deterred by that. If you've had ample experience with the Burmese and working with larger constrictors, these guys are going to be that really nice segue into the more complicated species like the anacondas, the greens, and the yellows. Um, so if you put the time in and you take the bites and or you invest in a nice pair of gloves and you handle them, they calm down and they turn into babies. I've got a tiger retic that I let run the house from time to time and she is an absolute puppy. I have no problems with that animal. Um, and, you know, for me, getting these animals as hatchlings and kind of ill is kind of fun. It gives you that rewarding experience. You take this aggressive little worm and turn it into a giant happy slug. Um, you know, so that, that kind of wraps up today. Um, if you guys would like, share, comment, um, feel free to. Uh, and keep in tune because here, next three days, I'm going to be doing another Triple L unboxing, Triple L reptile unboxing. Um, I'm getting in a couple anthrax. So, yeah, guys, keep in tune. Thanks. Alright, guys, please be sure to like and comment and subscribe to our channel. Um, and mash that bell button to get notifications when we upload. Um, we are going to be doing a lot more stuff coming up soon. You know, breeding season is just around the corner. And we're going to have a lot of cool stuff um, and a lot of cool projects going on. So, please keep in tune for that. And we'll have some cool stuff for you guys. And uh, hopefully... If we get the subscribers where we want them to be, you know, we're talking about potentially doing some giveaways, um, you know, different reptile products, maybe even a few snakes here or there. So just please like and comment and hit the bell. Thank you guys.